Uh, hey, how's it going? Okay, uh, just FYI, I'm still working out new format, uh, new format change stuff on uh, big picture stuff here, so that's why uh, temporary background stuff, uh, temporary uh, new recording location, uh, a lot of temporary things here. I didn't really want to do a uh, Rings of Power episode in general, really just kind of wanted to watch it, but it fits into too much of all the most other annoying stuff going on, so... Uh, here we go. Lord, Lord of the Rings is a weird property to cover on this stuff because it's treated special because of the pedigree. Uh, even in non-geek spaces, you know, it's one of those ones that it, it's really the only one in fantasy that we're required to take too seriously. You know, just about everything else in uh, at least the fantasy genre, you know, you can discuss in the same terms as other fantasy media where you can kind of cut it off at a certain point and go, you know, guys, we are just talking about elves, dragons, wizards, bullshit, whatever. Calm down your bullshit, basically. But because it's Lord of the Rings and because it's Tolkien and because it has all of the pedigree behind it, even when people are just going off about black dwarves and whatnot, we actually have to do, like, serious discourse about it, so someone has to jump in to those stupid discussions and be like, no, actually, according to English history and DNA, the original Britons were... And that's just playing into their game and making them engage in serious discussion, when in reality, the people who are pissed about that kind of thing are not the kind of people that you should even be having serious discussions with. You know, I'm sorry, if you're mad about the Black Dwarves in Lord of the Rings, like, if that's something that seriously angers you, if this is an important thing in your life, if the existence of a black woman playing a dwarf in a Lord of the Rings TV show is something that makes you angry enough, having some kind of episode, like, like something has gone wrong with you. At the bare minimum, like, if, if we find that out about you, they, they should not allow you to operate heavy machinery. Alright, that's like a danger to the public. Come on. Grow the fuck up. Yeah, I mean, not that there is ever any reason to be a racist about anything, but of all of these stupid things to be a racist about, and you just, you shouldn't humor people about shit like that. Because now you've made it seem as though this is a serious discussion you sh they should be having, they should be allowed to have. When in reality, it should begin and end with... Well, actually, it would not be possible for the dwarves to be black because it is a mythology of ancient... In reality, there's no such thing as dwarves and elves. So they can be whatever they want. Because none of this shit is real. Well, whenever you notice something like that, a wizard did it. I see, all right, yes. But in episode AG4... Wizard. Ah, for Glavin out. In reality, if the people making this TV show say that there can be leprechauns in it, there can be leprechauns in it. Because it's a TV show about a book about elves and wizards and dragons and other shit that don't exist. Get the fuck over it. But no, because it's Lord of the Rings and because the guy that wrote it was a professor and because it has all this other pedigree on it, people jump on it like, no, this this is somehow different. This this is the one that's different and, and walled off from all of the other fantasy where you can't have that. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. I take all of this stuff, I take all of the nerd stuff exactly as seriously as I take, uh, like, organized religion. Which is to say, I don't take it seriously at all. All right, I, I love and, and respect and, and cherish all of my, look, 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 like, like, I, I am, I am wearing a fucking He-Man t-shirt, right, right now, and I take, take my He-Man bullshit, and my Marvel X-Men Spider-Man Avengers bullshit, and my Lord of the Rings bullshit exactly as seriously as I take, uh, you know, heaven and hell and uh, all of that shit I was in Catholic school for. I take it all exactly as seriously. And if that bothers you, I take you even less seriously than that. And I bring that up at the beginning because I feel like that's a flag that absolutely does need to be planted straight away, line in the sand, starting point, scene one, act one, foundation of discussion. I'm not going to pretend that we don't all recognize that the basis for all the whining going on is that they cast the wrong kind of people, meaning the wrong color of people, in certain roles in this show and said that there might be expansions to the types of characters that didn't get as big a role in the source material, meaning women and people who make a living being or just are reflexively upset by the existence of those things as concepts became upset because that's how they make their living. 
Now that's not to say that everyone being a lore purist about Lord of the Rings is dick riding the fanboy racism grift, but a lot of them are, because Lord of the Rings has been around a long time, like I just got done saying, adaptations have been happening longer, and I can tell you from having swam in these waters since before I learned a doggy paddle that Tolkien deep canon was never pretend cared about to this widespread a degree until it became something YouTubers could farm hate clicks off of by sticking a black woman's face on a thumbnail with some yellow boldface text. So no, I'm not accusing you of being a racist if you're not crazy stoked for Amazon's Lord of the Rings TV show. I mean, if you're not stoked for Amazon's Lord of the Rings TV show, don't watch Amazon's Lord of the Rings TV show. But if your sight unseen, show unwatched response to the concept of it so far is negative and outrage beyond the point of, I don't know, well, that just doesn't look like something I want to watch or not really grabbing me, honestly, I'm a little suspicious because I don't see what the big fucking problem is supposed to be otherwise. Now look, folks, I, I know my Lord of the Rings. I'm not like Stephen Colbert up in here, but I know it, all right? And I know the canon. I just don't care about it because the canon beyond the main books really is not that You're going to get mad at me. Fine, fuck off. But the canon, I'm not saying it's bad. It's not like badly made up mythology. It's fascinating as mythos and background. It's deeply thought out. It's really cool that Tolkien put all this work into it. It's what makes it deep and rich and interesting and deep dive and whatnot. Less so as literature. Tolkien was a philologist and historian first and novelist second, and he got the novelist part really right twice when it came to The Hobbit and uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Uh, the Silmarillion and the appendices and the other stuff that he never actually finished anyway, not so much, no. It's it's an interesting read, there's, there's interesting bones of stuff in there, but it's not something that you were ever going to adapt into, you know, like a working narrative, which is, you know, part of why they didn't. You know, the other part being that they're not allowed to in the first place, which is why the show is, is what it's going to be. The Tolkien estate just isn't going to let you make the Silmarillion straight up if you wanted to. And if they did, like, look, have you read the Silmarillion? Because I have. Your story begins with the creation of Middle-earth, as recounted in the Ainulindale and the Valaquenta. Behold Melkor, proudest of the Ainu. Look, pal, we gotta speed this up. Not as many times as I've read the good Lord of the Rings stuff, but I've read it. And the only way this was ever going to work was if they did it as, like, a, like some esoteric super artsy Fantasia type thing, like maybe Fantasia mashed up with the non-verbal parts of Tree of Life. Now, I would love that. I would think that would be like very cool stuff. That would not be a several hundred million dollar movie production or thing on, uh, on Amazon. That was never going to happen. I would love it. Not going to happen. From a TV producer perspective, if uh, you're trying to make a Lord of the Rings show, and someone comes to you and they say, okay, what else is the general audience that needs to watch a show like this uh, remember about this property from those movies they saw? Because that's what most people know of Lord of the Rings at this point, and it's the reason to make the show. Yeah, if the pitch is, hey, do you remember the opening of the first movie when they show you all the other rings and all those other guys? You know, the seven for the dwarf lords and the halls of stone, the three for the elves, the nine for the humans that turn into the guys on the horses. Yeah, okay, whatever happened to all those people? Because we only see them for a few minutes, a couple seconds really, but they seems like they were important. You know, it's called the Lord of the Rings, and uh, they had the rings plural in that title. Uh, whatever happened to them? Yeah, that, that sounds like a show. Like, that's a pitch I'd pick up if I'm a TV executive. Yeah, that, that makes sense. You know, it's an extremely logical line of decision-making from a business of television perspective. It's a little bit Game of Thrones, but it's also the Star Wars prequels, except no little kid, and uh, Darth Vader is nine guys. Here, Cash, let's sit it now! <laughs> I think the trailers for it look fine. I don't know if it's, like, blowing me away, but it looks like a TV show based on Lord of the Rings. You know, if you showed me this with no context and I didn't do this for a living and asked me, what does this look like? I'd say, yeah, it looks like a Lord of the Rings TV show. Okay, yeah, I'll watch that. Elf chick looks hot. Dwarves look fun. I always love dwarves in these things. The dwarves always rule. There's monsters. Armies of guys fighting each other. People jumping around with weapons. Like, what? It's kind of what I want in one of these. Then you tell me, oh, we're going to tell you the uh, the backstory. We're going to do the second age. 
which, you know, even Tolkien only ever vaguely wrote stuff down about. Cool, okay, that's there's room to move around in there. And people bitch online about, oh my god, no, it's like the writers doing fanfic and coming up with their own stuff. Look, at, once we let St. Peter Jackson, who I call that for, he des if any filmmaker deserves to be called such after what he has been able to accomplish, he deserves it. But if we let St. Peter get away with this... Borzumishi. I am not alone. Assistance, my lady. You should have stayed. Hey! If you're gonna have a fight, then don't forget Channel 2 News with me, lead anchor Frank Fitcher. Come stand, bitches! Everything's okay. Everything's allowed now. Everything. You can put some Breath of the Wild motorcycle shit in there and it's fine. It's just fine. So I just can't imagine getting worked up unless I'm some alt-right YouTube dickhead who's mainly mad that there's a black woman playing a dwarf and the, some of the other elves are the wrong color and, uh, oh, uh, for some reason I guess uh, Galadriel shouldn't be the main character. Is she the main character in this? Again, I, I haven't uh, deliberately paid that much attention to, like, spoilers or whatnot because I want to watch the fucking show. The main thing that I know about uh, Galadriel in this show is this chick's fine as hell, so uh, I'm on board. You know, if the only thing they've pulled off on this is it's uh, Lord of the Rings with blonde Xena, I'm fine. I'm fucking fine. I'm all set. But the thing is, I know why they're worked up, and even if... There wasn't anything, like, explicitly obvious in there for them to get worked about. They would find something to get worked up about because people got to be worked up about because it's business. And I understand business. I don't like it, but I understand it. See, the, the reason that there's this whole, like, always pissed off version of nerd media now on YouTube, on Twitter, on, on you know, social media, whatever, is that during that brief window of time couple of years ago when when the last jedi and captain marvel both came out at the same time and made a bunch of money even though a certain stripe of uh, nerd media didn't like those movies for you know because you see that was kind of a game changer moment for a certain amount of uh specific creators on this stupid website all over the internet uh, nerdosphere but this stupid website specifically because a whole lot of guys who otherwise had basically no talent for media analysis, for criticism, for delivery, for whatever. We thought the war at last was ended. Fanboy culture got really, really used to for a certain stretch of time, for about like the first decade or so of the uh, of the the Marvel Universe, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, all being really, really big all at once. Got used to the whole concept of being aligned with mainstream super popularity that when twice in a row they just weren't, well, a certain number of them weren't, they freaked out. And when, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. We don't like two movies because girl, but movies are doing well and critics also like. This doesn't make sense, because for a decade or so, we've really liked Iron Man, The Avengers, Star Wars, whatever, and also those are good reviews, so this is like blowing minds. Wait a minute, we're out of step. We can't be out of step. Something, something's going wrong here. And they went looking for other, you know, YouTubers, voices in media, whatever, who were pissy like they were, and found them, and clicked them, and rang it up, and a whole bunch of otherwise, you know, hacky creators who basically had nothing going on other than screaming misogyny and racism into a microphone but about nerd shit got really, really big all at once and found out they could make some money off of it because people were clicking. You can go, you can podcast, you can merch, you can do whatever. But the thing is, if you've got no actual skill and you can and you get like famous for being a information source but you, that's not actually what you do if all you do is perform a version of it 
people only want that and then you have to repeat it over and over and over again and now a lot of these guys are basically in that loop whether they know it or not most of them aren't bright enough to actually know that that's what they're doing now you got to remember that there's like a, uh, a a severely overlapping republican voter venn diagram here so you're not dealing with uh like people of uh, of of reasonable human intelligence when it comes to this so uh a lot of this is is just uh you know lizard brain reaction and so a lot of them are just stuck being angry and repeating the same mood the same memes the same performative outrage because otherwise i mean what the hell else are they going to do this this is what they do now they are guys who are mad about women and minorities in nerd media on youtube and that's their character basically say the line bart oh, i didn't do it yeah you know uh just you know to be a tiny bit personal about it for a moment uh if you look on this channel uh if you're not uh a thousand percent familiar with the the history of this channel because i've been doing this for forever for a certain amount of time in, in other sites and other venues uh one of the highest rated i think probably still the highest viewed video on this channel is a review of the movie pixels uh with adam sandler that i did a couple years ago that uh i was i didn't like that movie i was not in a particularly happy place when it came out and i really tore into it and used a lot of invective and uh was uh, just really angry and pissed off about it and uh got very colorful about it and i got a lot of views that that got up in the millions and uh, if you look at the numbers on the others, the other videos on this channel, on uh, on my personal channel, do not generally get million views. Other stuff that I do elsewhere, yes. Uh, here on the personal channel, not so much. When that broke, I had, uh, you know, I was interviewed in The New Yorker for that. And I had uh, talent agents, uh, two or three, call up about that. And I had uh, other channels and uh, entertainment agencies call and, uh, you know, interview about that. And a thing that uh, was very uh, enlightening about doing that was, and I won't drop any names about, uh, you know, who was interested after that. A question, a version of a question that came up a lot was, can you do that again and again for other movies, for other things? You know, will you do that same mood, that same routine, that same character, uh, that, that same tone of voice? for other movies, eat regardless of how you feel about them. Like, not pretend to hate them, but have that same kind of attitude. You know, are you, do you, are there other actors, uh, like, because I, I, at the time, said that, uh, you know, I wasn't uh, thrilled about uh, Adam Sandler in the movie. Uh, you know, are there other actors that you want to take some shots at? Do you have, uh, can you be angry? Can you just repeat that for other things? And, uh... Uh, in case you are, uh, again, looking at this channel, that I am not doing a uh, million view angry reviews for uh, every movie that comes out, I didn't chase that. Uh, maybe I should have. I might be making more money at it. Uh, but uh, I didn't want to do that. Uh, because, one, I, just, I, can't, it's, I wasn't faking it on that. And uh, I'm, I'm not a good enough actor <laughs> to, uh, to, to, you know put that on as a character but that is what i think a lot of the uh the feigned outrage again not that i think a lot of these guys are aware of it because they're not terribly bright or self-aware do when they chase this you know we are angry about woke media you know woke go woke go broke it's destroying this franchise or that franchise is they're they're repeating shit that they know gets them views and it's a routine and it's just pavlovian because it's what got them very, very popular at one specific point in time, and now they just have to keep hitting it because they've got a locked-in audience that only wants to hear a version of that over and over and over and over again. And it's, uh, you know, it's it's not as sad as literally everything else about their lives and existence or the fact that people respond to it, but it is sad. It is sad. But, you know, yeah, again, for my part, I think this show looks like fun. Maybe it's not. If it's not, I'll get the fuck over it, move on, and watch something else. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see. And uh, that's that's what I wanted to get out about uh, Rings of Power. 
Uh, like I said, this was a semi-off-the-cuff episode. We're still working out uh, new formats uh, going forward, uh, adjusting format for big picture to get out opinion pieces in one format and, uh, you know, more deep dive stuff in other formats to make them uh, more varied content on the channel. Uh, depending on how well I can get the background to blur, you can uh, see me in the, uh, the temporary shooting situation here. You may even see the microphone on camera. You may even have heard my phone go off just now. But yeah, that's what i got to say about Rings of Power. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, if you're mad about Black Dwarves, please get a fucking life. And otherwise, uh, I look forward to finding out if the show is good for, like, you know, reasons that matter when it comes out. Until then, I'm Bob, and that's the big picture.